Um, this is an intro to power chords. And power chords are basically what you might call dyads, two note chords. A power chord would consist of a root and a fifth. If we were to count up, say for example, on a G scale, up five notes from G, one, two, three, four, five, we would get a D. And so we have G and D. So that's basically a G power chord, okay? Um, the triad, G, B, D, would have a third in it. See, the power chord does not have a third in it. So there's no major or minor tonality to a power chord. Um, I'll, I'll show you, here's G. G minor, G, B flat, D, okay? If I just play the G and the D while fingering a G chord, a G major chord, it sounds the same as playing the, the root and fifth while fingering a minor chord. See, I'm going back and forth between those two. And because I'm not playing the third, you can't tell the difference. So what that means is that allows you to play this G chord over a major or a minor chord. If it says G minor, you can still play that. If it says G major, you can play this. If it says G7, you can play this. So that's the beauty of power chords. It kind of simplifies um, what you have to be able to do to be, be able to play basic songs. I think one of the reasons, uh, kind of my thinking of one of the reasons why power chords came into existence was prior to distortion, when uh, guitar players weren't distorting their amps, they wouldn't have a problem playing playing a, you know, just a bar chord um, with a root, a fifth, a root, a third, a fifth, a root, all these notes in it, but that third in there, it would get a little, with distortion would tend to bring out these overtones that exist throughout the, each string, and it would just get a little muddy sounding. So they started to tighten it up and just play the bottom few notes. And so that's basically, you take the basic bar, G bar chord and take the bottom three notes and you've got a power chord. Same thing with the the, the, the A form bar chord. So I'm going to show you these now. I'm going to show you um, four and a fifth variation uh, for power chords, okay? The first one is just the root five power chord. So it's just two fingers, first and third, and you can, you could use your pinky if you want to, but I would use your third. Um, and what it is, very, very tight low, very dark, okay, now that's the root and the fifth one, okay, I could add the, another octave up here and go root, fifth, and root, so now that's the first finger, the third finger, and the fourth finger on the bottom three strings, so that same, Be another variation. A little fuller sounding than the, just the root and the fifth. I could also go just take my the fifth note and go down a string, and now it's just root and octave, or yeah, root and octave, two roots, no fifth. And that's got a little bit of a hollower sound. Um, it's basically just an octave, um, but we can call it a root root situation. So. a very different sound than the power the full power chord but if that's too muddy too dark you can get rid of that middle note and just do the octaves okay so you can get some good sounds with a, just the octave one okay now I have one that I call a what I call the super power chord um, and what I did there here was, okay, so here's the, the G power chord. We have the root, the fifth, and the root. Like I said, that's kind of muddy, especially down here in the lower, way down there. So this one's difficult, but it's, it's kind of worth having in your arsenal if you really want to have uh, more variety in your playing. And what I do is I do root, octave, and basically I do a root, octave, and a fifth. So I call it a super power chord. So it's, a, it's got a brighter tone to it. A little bit brighter tone than the um, than the standard power chord. Okay, now there's another way you can do power chords. It's even easier than those those ways, but that would require you to do a drop D tuning. Now 
once you drop D, this is a D power chord right now. Here's E, F. You can see where it could get very easy to play fast. It's very easy to play those kind of chords fast that way. Okay. So that was kind of the fifth variation. Okay, now, all of these power chords that I've showed you were all based on the, the bottom string, on the sixth string, on the E string, okay? Now that you can do, you can do the um, first three that I showed you, you can do on the, based on the fifth string, which is the A string. So this would be C, because this is a C note right here. We're gonna talk about that in a second. So we have root, fifth, and fifth to that, or the octave, sorry, so we have root, fifth, octave. Okay, so then um, we can also do the octave. Okay, so we have basically the fifth, the root and the fifth, the root, fifth, and the root, the root and the root on the, on the fifth string. Okay, now, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to memorize the notes on the bottom string, on the E string, okay, and then also memorize the notes on the A string. Um, and so basically what you have is E, F, F sharp or G flat, G, G sharp or A flat, A, a sharp or B flat, B, C, C sharp or D flat, D, D sharp or E flat, and E. That's all 12 of the notes. You could start out with just the, just the non-sharp flat notes. You could go E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, okay? And just memorize that. Uh, maybe make yourself a little quiz you can do. Um, and then do the same thing with the A string. So we have A, A, B, C, D, E, going if you want. But at, at the 12th fret, it just starts to repeat itself. So F, G, A, B, C, D, etc. It does the same, same notes you did down here. It starts over again right here at the 12th fret. Okay. Now the cool thing about that is as soon as you memorize those, now you're able to find the power, those power chords really quick. If it says D, D chord, you can go, you can go up here. If it says C, you can go here, up here. If it says B flat, you got here or here. If it says F, you can go here or here. You'll start to learn those and you'll be able to kind of find chords faster on the neck. Here's the other thing. Don't forget that the top string is also an E string. So if you've memorized the low E string, you've also memorized the top E string. Okay, so this is E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, etc. By doing so, you've memorized a half of your fretboard. And remember, that's one of the most important things you can do, especially you electric guitar players. You, the, knowing every note on the fretboard really, really helps. It helps you find things here when you're trying to find, someone says play a C note and you find a C note. Or it also helps you analyze something you're playing. You're like, what chord is this? You know, if you play a chord, you can analyze it because you know the notes on the fretboard. Um, and so that's a real, real important thing for you. So I would, I would work on that. Okay, also, uh, for practicing, um, I was playing a little bit of foreplay by Boston. I, that's a great, uh, I taught that for years to students because it was such a great, you know, it was like, uh, it's such a great progression of chords that forces you to not only go up and down the neck, but go across the neck. So you need to be able to not only go up the neck and back down, you also need to be able to go across the fretboard like this. And you can make up exercises. I'm big on making up exercises to work on something. You can even take a, a passage of, of the Boston song and um, make, it, uh, make it into an exercise for yourself. Uh, that's, that's, that's the best way to get something down quickly. Okay, is to, is to, if you're having trouble learning a large passage, uh, 
take it in chunks and turn each chunk into an exercise, okay? I hope this makes sense to you. Um, I will put diagrams, as you noticed, up over my shoulder, and uh, hopefully we'll uh, get you rocking. God bless you guys, I'll talk to you soon.